Praise the Lord. Y'all having fun? Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. He's wonderful. And I, I want to take the time to thank God for all of you who are here. And don't clap. I'm clapping for y'all. All right. I just thank God for every single one of you. Those listening and watching, God bless you. Thank God for you. Amen. You belong to God. Amen. Yes. All right, y'all put your candies under your, under your seat and not opening them now. We're not going to eat during church. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm glad my children, I can get some candy out of the church. Amen. God is good. God is good. I want to thank God for Brother Stephen and Tiffany here, Murphy. Amen. Now, they are just moving in the area, and they moved in in a big way. Now, Sister Tiffany is the assistant dean and executive director of housing and residential life at Claflin University. Yes, yes, yes. And Brother Stephen, I met them because Brother Stephen is opening up a business, a counseling center in Orangeburg, where I have my offices downtown as well. And this coming Saturday, this coming Saturday, June 15th, 11 a.m., he had no clue I was going to do this. No clue whatsoever. He is doing a grand opening. The Chamber of Commerce, everybody's going to be there. Y'all come. Not only is he a licensed counselor, but he is national board certified. Yes. And I'm not even going to name the different institutions here in Orangeburg who have already reeled him in and say, you know, you are the first one wow. ever in Orangeburg. Wow, wow. Ever. And so when uh, Joshua, Maya, and I were over there yesterday and he was uh, cleaning up and getting some things together, we were talking and they said, what church? What church do you pastor? He said, we're going to try to come. I said, tomorrow's Children's Day. He said, we're going to try to come. So thank y'all so much for coming. God bless you. Amen. God is just good, isn't he? Amen. It's, I, I told his wife, I said, you know, I'm going to call your husband thermometer because you go in his office. I said, he got more degrees than a thermometer. I was like, what in the world? I mean, he's going to need a second wall. Just He said, yeah, and I, I just got these. I'm like, where you going where you going to put it? And he's working on his PhD to top it off. So be encouraged. I just pray God's continued blessings as we all point and just pray God's continued blessings on your lives. And uh, even as I hear the Holy Spirit saying the road that's going to become richer for the both of you, I just praise and bless God for all he's doing and going to do for you and your children in the name of Yeshua Jesus Hamashiach, the Messiah, we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for helping me pray. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I want, I want us to realize something because the Lord has been dealing with me concerning this in the past 24 hours. I want us to realize that we do not go through life the way people of the world go through life. Because we have an advantage. Amen. And maybe a week or two or so, I'm going to talk more about it. But we need to see ourselves as aliens. Come on, sir. Because Jesus made us aliens. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. He said, you're not of the world. Not of the world. Amen. We're not of the world. Amen. 
If you met an alien, one of the first things you would wonder is, I wonder what kind of powers they have. What can they do? That's who we are. We are aliens. We have powers that other people just simply don't have because we have Jesus. And I know I've been talking about this and I've heard people who have spoken to me and they have said how God has used them to get people healed and talking to people and getting their minds right. Like, thank God you're going to help people to do. So I'm looking forward to more of that because this is who God has called us to be. Amen. 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 So let's do it. You never know where God's going to need you. And so we just have to be ready. Have to be ready. I took a little break, went to Pensacola, Florida Tuesday. I was coming back Friday. And American Airlines called me and said, "Um, your flight and everything is fine, but would you trade to go earlier, a couple hours earlier. If so, we'll give you $300 flight credit. I said, sugar, put me on the plane, okay? (laughs) Put me, that's all you had to say. Put me on the plane. And so I got there and I was, uh, was seated in the very first seat and the stewardess, she sat in her seat and you know, they always face the, the passengers. So I had my cap on, of course, asked Jesus, he answers. And I mean, just out loud, in front of the whole plane, she said, I asked Jesus, but I didn't get an answer yet. And so I'm just sitting there. And I'm like, oh, I understand. And then she just proceeded, son, in front of the whole plane. You know, um, I'm divorced, I just got divorced, and my husband, this, this, that, and other. So I'm sitting there, I'm saying to myself, she's doing this in front of the whole plane. And she said, I don't know what God wants, and yada, 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 this, that, and the other. And so she said, I told my mom, I know this is warfare. I said, she's putting her business out in front of this entire plane right now, just talking out loud. And so I started talking to her, I started giving her what the Lord was giving to me concerning her. And I won't go through the whole thing, but I'm just saying, you just never know. You just never, ever know. And I was coming back. And I told her, I said, God put me on this plane because I'm supposed to leave, was supposed to leave two hours later. And she said, oh, God put you on my plane. Now going to Florida, I sat by a lady who doesn't believe in God. Not at all. And she said when my mother was dying, she just couldn't get it because my mother never took us to church. She said she was Catholic, but she never took us to church. And when she was dying, she was so shocked that I didn't believe in God. And she said, I don't understand it. I said, well, let me explain. Even though she didn't take you to church, y'all didn't go to church as children, she believed. And so she felt that you would believe in God, but just simply not go to church. She said, well, it didn't work out like that. I said, yeah, I understand. And so I'm talking to the Holy Spirit in my spirit. And he said, just minister kindness to her. That's all. Not the gifts of the spirit. The Lord shows me this and your bedroom is this color. None of that. Just minister kindness to her. So that's what I did. Even when we got to uh, get our our bags, I got her bag. She don't have to do that. Got the bag. I said, God bless you. And then under my voice, I said, with salvation. (laughs) I do that often. Y'all can take that one, please. So, oh, yeah, God bless you with salvation. Thank you, Lord. And God will do it. God will do it. 
So I'm just letting you know, these are ways that we can just be available to people. Because people need to know what's going on in their lives because they don't understand it. I mean, we go through this life and, and, and the waves and the winds and everything is going on in life and it's rocky. Even though Jesus is there, even though he is right there, we go through stuff. We're with Jesus. We're with him. And we're still going through stuff that causes People call them emotions. No, they're not emotions. They're spirits. They cause different spirits to tempt us. So I want to deal with one of the spirits, which some people call the major spirit that Satan uses. And of course, you know, that's fear. And so today's message is fear, the x-ray factor. I want to deal with the x-ray factor of fear because the Holy Spirit showed me something last week concerning fear that I didn't see before. I just didn't see it before. So let's look at what fear is. Fear is the belief that something or someone is likely to cause pain. That's what fear is. It's the belief. Something or someone is likely to cause pain. Lord, help us all. So instead of tolerating fear, Allowing it to alarm us. We should view its presence and purpose as a tool. The next time you sense fear, don't see it as something that alarms you because you feel fear. Somebody else could be standing right beside you facing the same thing and they're not afraid. So why are you experiencing fear? Use it as a tool, like an x-ray machine revealing what's truly inside of us is what we should do. What is inside? And you have fear. Why are you afraid? What in you is causing the fear? Somebody else right beside you, they're unaffected by what the both of you are facing. Why is it, what is in you that's causing the fear? Fear itself doesn't damage us. David, please check the monitor. Fear itself doesn't damage us. So never, ever, ever shy away from fear, ever. Fear doesn't damage. Don't shy away from fear. How does fear ever, what has fear ever damaged in you? Ooh, the Lord is speaking. If we allow fear to influence us, it can often lead us to cause needless harm to ourselves. Fear comes to show you what's inside of you. And then that can cause you to hurt or harm yourself. What's the number one reason people commit suicide? It's not the present that they worry about. It's the future. They fear the future. What is going to happen? I don't want to face what is going to happen in the future. What in you, what what is fear being used as an x-ray showing up in you? Why are you afraid that, oh my goodness, if people find out that 
I got fired from this position and got demoted. It's going, it's going to just ruin my name. So fear as an x-ray shows you have some pride issues. Oh my goodness, I don't, I, I, I don't want to die. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to die. Why are you afraid to die? Well, I, I know I hadn't been living for God. I, I didn't finish my oath. So complacency, fear show complacency up. I haven't been doing what I should be doing for God. And if I die now, I don't know if I'm going to make it to heaven because I didn't do everything else. for. Oh, complacency. What does fear show up? In us, I would open this business, but I don't. I don't. I know God said to do it, but I don't. I don't think people are gonna support me. Oh, you're doubting. You're doubting that God will favor you, so you're doubting God. Fear used as an X-ray machine. When the X-ray comes out, oh, you got doubt right there. Yep, I see. You got doubt right there. Every time we fear, is something else working in there. That fear is showing up. <sighs> Matthew 14, 26 through 31. And of course, as was and still is depicted, the story. And when the disciples saw him, speaking of Jesus, walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is the Spirit. And they cried out for fear. It's the Spirit. It wasn't a Spirit. So believing a lie, a lie allows fear to take control of our situation. Revealing that our uncertainty, oh, it's a spirit. Revealing that our uncertainty about what we can, so what we see, can create uncertainty about our safety. It's a spirit. It's not a spirit. That's uncertainty. So because fear revealed uncertainty. They saw, I mean, it's already wind and waves and boat rocking, and now somebody is walking on the water. It just, it, it is a spirit, and they cried out, alarm. Wow. Twelve teenage boys, as we know, all the disciples were teenagers. Amen. You could just hear them. And you know, when you're teenagers, boy, you kind of have like a high pitch thing, so they're ah! Oh! <laughs> hey, it's reality to me. I mean, because this actually happened. So you had 12 teenagers seeing this. It's a spirit! Ah! <laughs> Again, revealing our uncertainty about what we can see Amen. creates uncertainty about our safety. I guess, what? What did they think the spirit was going to do to them? Oh, that thing walking towards us. Gracious day. Verse 27, but straightway Jesus spake unto them. He said this, saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Cheer means comfort. Be of good comfort. It's me, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Jesus is compassionate towards us when we are uncertain of his actions. He showed them compassion. Trust him to reveal himself in every situation. It can be stormy. Jesus was not with them on the boat. He was away somewhere praying. Then he comes to them walking on the water. He didn't get out the boat and start walking on the water. No, 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 no. He came from somewhere. <laughs> so when we're going through something, when Jesus reveals himself, trust that he will. 
And I'm telling you, I don't care what situation you go to, Jesus will always reveal himself. Amen. Now listen, the Holy Spirit has us going step by step, verse by verse. So we have to catch this. We have to catch it because of where we're going. You're going to need these, hallelujah, these previous verses because God is helping somebody's mind this morning, I'm this afternoon. He's helping, he's helping, he's helping. Jesus commands us to be comforted. That's what he said, be of good cheer. He commands us to be comforted. I command you to chill out. Woo! Oh, this is happening. Oh, that chill out. It's me. I'm here. Even though the wind and the rain and everything is still going on, I'm here. The problem is still here. And so am I. But the situation is, is, is just right here in my face. And I'm right here in your heart. Come on. I'm, I'm telling you how Jesus looks at us. I'm telling you what he is viewing when he sees us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. So the situation is more real to you than I am? That's the way you see it? But Jesus just never know what you're going to do. Oh. Yeah, I did let you down before, didn't I? No, 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 no. You've never let me down. Oh. So what do you mean you never know what I'm going to do? Yes, you do. I'm never going to let you down. Hallelujah. I'm never going to let you down. I never have. Why do you think this situation? I've never faced this. Oh, so because it's new to you, I don't know what to do. Jesus commands us to be comforted once he, we realize he is in our situation. Why? Because this realization provides the comfort, all the comfort that cancels all fear. I'm here. Now, some people may say, I need to know more than just he's here. I need to know more. What? Because I don't know what he's going to do. All right. Situation happens and the police arrive. Are you like, that's not enough for me. I need to know what they're going to do. <laughs> no, you don't think that at all. Somebody say, okay, y'all, the police are here now. Why don't we say that about him? Oh, Jesus is here now. Jesus is here now. Yes, yes. We believe in the police more than we believe in Jesus. Come on, come on. That's good. Somebody passes out. Is there a doctor or nurse around? And nobody's coming. Is there a doctor or nurse around? Then somebody comes over. Oh, what do you? I'm an old girl. The nurse is here now. You have no clue what that nurse is about to do. But just the fact that they are present, he or she is present, just the fact that Jesus is present should cancel all of our fear. We ain't got, we, okay, I'm on my way. Verse 28, and Peter answered him, and this is so powerful to me. They go from crying out in fear to Peter answering Jesus and said, Lord, if it be thou, if this is you, bid me come unto thee on the water. Tell me to come on the water, Jesus, if this is you. Oh, I just loved it. Last week, when I got this message together, I had never seen what the Holy Spirit showed me. Verse 29, and he, Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go 
to Jesus. Now, for those who've been members here for a while, I always point this out, and I want to point it out again. Jesus said one word, come. In that word was not just the instruction, but the power to do it. Anytime Jesus tells us anything in that instruction is not just the instruction. In that word or those words, it's not just the instruction, but it includes the power to do it. So when Jesus said, come, it empowered Peter to walk on the water. Whatever Jesus tells us to do, we have to, whatever Jesus tells you to do, with that instruction comes the power to do it. How can he command you to do something without empowering you to do it? That's just the way it goes. So when Jesus reveals himself in our tumultuous, our uproar of a situation, it's the perfect time to exercise our faith in him, but strictly according to his word. Jesus revealed himself. Okay, so you're going through something, you're going through something you've never gone through before. You, it, it's, it's troubling you. All this is going on around you. What should I do? Jesus, where are you? I'm right here in this situation. Amen. That's you. Yeah, I did that. No, it wasn't them. That's me. I did that. Right then and there, use your faith. I never saw that before, Jordan. Never. Right in the situation. I'm going through this situation. Jesus, what it? No, this, this, this me. I'm, I'm right here. Asked to walk on the water right then and there. I mean, the statistics say one out of 12 will ask. You get it? There were 12 disciples, only one. So one out of 12 will ask to be a part of a miracle. Why did Peter want to walk on the water? Because he was, even though it was raining, he was still a dusty disciple. For those who don't know, I just did a message on dusty disciples because they walked closely behind Jesus on the roads and the dust kicked up. And so that was a thing back then. If you were a dusty disciple, you were close to your master as he taught and you walked behind him. So he was a dusty disciple. Dusty disciples want to do whatever their masters do. Amen. So why did he want to walk on the water? Because my master walking on the water. I have no other reason. When we are a disciple of Jesus Christ, we want to do whatever he is doing. Jesus, what are you doing in this situation? I'm just waiting until the time. Well, then I'm going to wait until the time. I've been worrying. I've been fretting. I've been wondering. I've, no, Jesus isn't doing any of that. Just wait. Waiting is the hardest thing because I don't know what's going to happen. Jesus said, well, I'm waiting. Well, I'm a dusty disciple, so I'm going to wait. I'm just simple. I'm just going to wait. And what, what are the lyrics of the song? Trust you while I'm waiting. Serve you while I'm waiting. I'm going to trust you while I'm waiting. Serve you while I'm waiting. Praise you while I'm waiting. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep doing that. We're going to keep it while I'm waiting. Oh, I just love it. Oh, he gave, the Holy Spirit gave me something else. Whatever emotion we display during our trials, that emotion reveals what's actually operating in us. We call fear an emotion. Look it up in the dictionary. They call it an emotion. Fear is a spirit that causes us to act. No fear just wants you to feel it. And that's all. 
Every fear wants to cause you to act. Every fear wants to cause some type of reaction. They're going, they said they're going to repossess my car. Let me call this one. Let me call that. You done called everybody but Jesus. If they repossess my car, it's over. No, it's not. I was, a, I was working at a credit union for 14 years. I have seen, I don't know how many cars the credit union repossessed. And I can't even count how many people came with an attitude and cash. Now, can I get my car back? Like, how you come up with three months the payments. <laughs> All of a sudden, but we've been calling and lettering and everything yeah, else, and, right. and you didn't have it. <laughs> now that we took your car, now, nah, yeah, okay. So it's not over. Amen. It's that's my whole point. Yes. If they take the car, I don't know what I'm going to do. No, you're going to know what to do. <laughs> Jesus is right there. Gracious day, he's right there. Right there. What is in us? What is in us during that time? What is fear showing up in us? And, and it's not all the time fear, sometimes frustration. Why are you frustrated? Because I want it all. Oh, it's selfishness. So frustration is an x-ray and it shows up selfishness. Right. All right, right. Oh, oh, why are you angry? Anger is an x-ray machine showing up. So the next time you respond with something or you get angry, you get scared or you get frustrated, find out what is in you that's causing this. Now, of course, there is a holy anger. The Bible says anger, but sin not. Right. There is a holy anger. Yes. Jesus got frustrated and turned over the tables. So there's a frustration that is warranted. Somebody say, how can I tell the difference? Is it coming from God or is it coming from you? All right. Amen. Is it because the word of God says this is wrong and that is the source of my frustration. That's the source of my anger. I am mad at this because the Bible says this is wrong. Yes. Yes. I don't have any personal stake in this whatsoever. So, what is within us that causes us to revert to operating in fear even after being freed from it. Why do we go back to fear? Even after being freed from it. Now this is something I've never seen. I have heard this story and read this for buku of the years of my, in about three weeks I'll be 56. And I have never, ever seen this. Huh. So, in verse 30, but when he, talking about Peter, saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. We often revert to fear when what we see appears more powerful than the miracle we're currently experiencing. Whoa. Peter, you walking on water. On. You're experiencing a miracle right now. You were walking on water when the waves and stuff was happening. Nothing has changed. You stepped out and there was a storm. What changed? Nothing. Nothing changed. Why did, you, why did you revert and go back to fearing? Ah, it's a ghost. It's a spirit. 
No, it's me. Well, Jesus, tell me to come to you. Come. Wow, I am walking on water. and this, Nothing has changed. Oh, if you think that is something, a lack of strict obedience will always cause us to sink. What do you mean? In Peter's case, Jesus said, come, not look. Peter got scared because he looked. Did Jesus say look? No. Jesus gave him one simple act to perform. One little command in one word. Come. He didn't say look. We don't want to deal with strict obedience. We want to go and look and feel and wonder. All I said to do was come. What else are we doing? You want to know why we're afraid? Because we're not being obedient to God. We're not dealing with strict right. obedience. Amen. Your feet down. Right. Amen. Amen. Strict obedience. Yes. 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 Why are you looking? Why are you looking? And if you read the rest of it, when they got back in the boat, the Bible says Jesus, he picked them up and the both of them walked on water back to the boat. Then what happened once they got back in the boat? Everything. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hands and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? I wonder, through the security, I mean the, uh, what do you call them? Safety guard, the, the people? Lifeguards. What did lifeguards say? After they saved you. Dummy, why did you go out there? <laughs> yeah, keep coughing. Why are you coughing? Read this sign that you passed to go out there. Didn't it say not to go? I should have left you out. No, let me stop. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hands, caught him and said to him, O thou Lord of faith, wherefore did thou doubt? The word doubt in the original language means hesitate. Where did you hesitate? And that's us. Jesus said, come. All right, here I go. But look at, why did you hesitate? I just said, do it. Yeah, but this one wouldn't help me. That would keep going. I don't want, because if they help you, they're going to go tell everybody they wouldn't be who they are if I wasn't the one that helped them. That's why I didn't want them to help you. You mad at Aunt Susie Q because she wouldn't loan you $1,500 to open your eyes. Aunt Susie, you know Aunt Susie Q don't do nothing but gossip anyway. Why in the world would you even ask her? Anyway, the point is, keep going. Just keep going. Where did you hesitate? Ask yourself, where did I hesitate? I know Jesus said do this. Where did I hesitate? I'm standing here in line in Walmart, and I'm waiting on one of the um, registers to open so I can just ring up my own stuff. And the Holy Spirit is telling me to talk to this person in front of me. Ask them, are they happy today? I don't know. This, that's where you hesitated. Thinking. Did he say think or did he say tell? I didn't, I didn't say think. I said tell them this interrogative statement which means it's a question. Are you happy today? That's all. I didn't say thing. I didn't say, 
Why are you looking behind? Did I say look at, to see who's behind you? What does that have to do with anything I said? I just simply said to ask them, are they happy today? Where did you hesitate? You hesitated right when you decided to be disobedient and do something else. Other than what he said to do. That's where we all hesitate. Do this. Uh, why are you thinking? I didn't say think this. I said do this. Now, you know, I have to work it out. <laughs> oh, I'm Jesus. I didn't already work it out. I didn't already think about what's going to happen. Like I don't already know what's going to happen. So you're going to have to think it out. Oh, I don't know if it's going to work. I, I told you to do it. So Jesus told Peter to come so that Jesus could laugh at him when he just sinks. Oh, wow. Come. Watch him come. No. Look at him falling. He know he can't walk on water. I'm the owner. No. I said come because I want you to experience a miracle. You're a dusty disciple. You want to do what you see your master doing. Come. Come. That's the relationship he wants with us. If we call out to Jesus during our trials, he will rescue us from sinking and he will also provide corrective measures. Why? To prevent what is in us. To prevent what in us caused a lack of faith in him. Doubt. Doubt is that you hesitated. That is why you're sinking. Yeah, I'm going to save you. We're going to walk back. But why did you hesitate? We have to ask ourselves that. I'm telling you. The Holy Spirit just said to me, some people are in a hesitation right now. From what God has told you to do. Dr. Murphy, I'm sure you hesitated when God said, come to Orangeburg in the Orangeburg. <laughs> I can see Atlanta, there's more people there. Charlotte, there are more people there. Greenville is wide open. Orangeburg. But won't he do it? <laughs> Just do it. Just do it. All right, your life work assignment Number one, at each encounter of fear from now on and even fears that you may be going through now or that you've had in the past, at each encounter that led to a failure, think about your past fears, and it led to a failure of your faith in Jesus, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what was within you that caused your faith to falter, to fail. Why did my faith fail in Jesus? I remember he told me to do this. I didn't do it. I was, I was scared. Why? Holy Spirit revealed to me. What was it? Was it pride? I know fear was there, but what, what did fear x-ray and show up in me? Yeah. I got so angry. Why did I get angry? You know why you got angry? Because you were embarrassed embarrassment was in you and you got embarrassed and you felt like they had the upper hand so you got to ang anger as an x-ray machine showed you got embarrassment issues why were you embarrassed because you got a pride that you shouldn't have Amen. nobody ever gets embarrassed without having some form of pride there's no embarrassment where there's no pride. Yep. When I went to Claflin as a freshman, I ran for the freshman chaplain to be the freshman chaplain. And I think there were three or four people who were going up for it. And so I was going up the steps to the stage and I tripped 
going up the steps. And you know, people who, I mean, all of them just got out of high school, so what they gonna do but laugh? That's what high schoolers do. So they laughed at me. And I'm standing there, and I'm just letting them laugh. I'm just smiling, I'm like, yeah, all right. And so then I gave my, my speech for my little cards, and then I said, I'm going to use this. I'm not gonna be embarrassed. I'm going to use this to my advantage. So when I finished my speech, I came down the steps like this, and they, they started laughing with me because that was funny to them. And I won over 90% of the whole vote and became chaplain. So don't let it embarrass you. Flip that thing around. Flip around. No pride. Amen? Amen. Ask the Holy Spirit. Then number two, after the Holy Spirit reveals what caused your faith to falter, ask him to teach you how to prevent future failures of your faith. Holy Spirit, what do I need to do to make sure this never happens again? Jesus told Peter, you hesitated. That's why it's so good to read the original language. So good. And I use BibleHub.com to do that or Bible.cc. It goes to the same one. And I look up the scripture, I click, I I want to go. If it's Old Testament, you want to look up the Hebrew, KJV, King James Version. If it's New Testament, Greek. And then once it pulls up the scripture, you click on the word. Then you go and then you search for that scripture because one word may mean something else in different scriptures. So you want to find that scripture in there. And now, now, now you understand. Because the KJV says, where did you doubt? We would have never known doubt there actually comes from the word that means to hesitate. Jesus actually said in the Aramaic, why did you hesitate? Hesitate means a whole lot more to us than just doubt. Just a nice, cool way to study your Bible. Somebody say, good, that's going to encourage me to read and study my Bible. Go, go, let's do it. Amen? So when the Holy Spirit reveals it to you, say, Holy Spirit, what do I need to do to make sure this doesn't happen again? I don't want to doubt you ever again. Because I'm telling you, fear is definitely the x-ray factor in every single one of our lives. It is. And so, Father, thank you for teaching us. Thank you for giving us this word. Thank you for this message that came directly from you. I didn't get it out of a book. I didn't hear somebody else preach it. You said this to me to give to your people today. So, Father, thank you for teaching us about ourselves. And we're never going to feel fear again and just think that because we feel fear, we are afraid. No, we're not afraid. I'm just sensing that spirit of fear. And what is it going to show up in me? I am a spirit, so I'm going to sense spirits. But what is this spirit showing up in me? How am I going to respond? Father, you are absolutely brilliant. Because we're experiencing miracles right now in our lives and still fearing, still afraid because we're not being obedient. You didn't say to think about the problem. You didn't say plan what's going to happen ahead. I'm talking to Shane and everybody else. You didn't say plan ahead. You didn't say do this. You just said this. Just do this. And so, Father, thank you. Yes, Lord. Forgive us for going Uh, against your will by doing what we thought we should do to save ourselves. Either we believe you have our lives or we don't. So thank you, Father. We give you all glory, praise, and honor. And Father, I thank you for next week's message and the one after that. You are are developing us into these. The only word that's coming to me is tall, 
and buff and ready to face anything, Amen. even fear. Yeah. I know it has been said the only thing to, to fear is fear itself. I wish we would. No, we're not going to even fear, fear, fear at all. We're not going to be afraid of fear. We're going to say, oh, you're here to see what's inside of me? Let me show you what's inside of me. That's how we're going to respond to fear and anger and everything else that our human spirit senses from other spirits trying to tempt us to do something that you did not tell us to do. And that's this whole message yes, Lord. in a nutshell. So, Father, thank you. We love you and bless you and praise you. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Messiah, we pray amen and amen. Amen. Now there may be somebody who's not saved. Will you bow your heads, close your eyes? If you're not saved, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, trust me, you're going to be in a situation where you're going to need him. It's going to rain. The waves are going to be crazy. The wind is going to be crazy. And even the days where everything is calm, we still need Jesus because things may emerge. That's where the word emergency comes from. It's there. It just emerged. It just came up to our face. So we need Jesus what we, in what we call good situations and in what we call bad situations. So let's just give him our lives so we won't have to worry about our lives because he has them. So if you're not saved or if you need to and you want to just rededicate and give your life to him afresh and anew, let's do that by just simply repeating after me. If you're here listening and watching, just simply say, Father, I come before you now by Jesus Christ who died for me and who you raised from the dead. Forgive me of all my sins. I'm sorry for sinning against you. Come into my life, Jesus, and live your life through me so I can please the Father, just like you please the Father. Thank you for saving me from the lake of fire, from hell, so that I can go to heaven and be with you forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. God bless you.